when I first came here, it was really hard for me to get in the environment. I left Syria with my mom, escaping the war, and came here to Los Angeles. Well, first, I didn't want to be in an all-girls Catholic school. I'm the only one that has my headscarf on. Everyone was like asking me, why do you have it on? I would tell them, I have it on because I'm Muslim. And they tell me, what, but why in your religion, why do you put it on? I say to protect us, to protect the women. It's like about this tall. Oh, six feet, at least he's six years old. I was like, yeah. bad girl, stop. <laughs> I've lived a certain way for 13 years. And now it's like everything is just different. How much are these? In Syria, everyone's the same. But here, one is Mexican, one is Filipino, one is Korean, one is Middle Eastern. It's ten dollars for skinny. Like each one is different. Each one is raised in different families, different cultures. There's like a magazine store, you can stare at K-pop and stuff. They're all Koreans here. There's some white people. Like it's all They're Korean. Gorgeous. Like it's oh, all Korean. Oh, 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 this is Goo Family Book though. Yeah, that is Goo Family Book. Do you have something without me? Do you have something no meat, no ham? No ham? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Do you have kimbap? You know what kimbap is? No. It's like seaweed. Oh no, but they have meat. Before I left Syria, things got worse and worse. There were bombs and shootings in front of my house and stuff, and it was really scary. If the pain has gone, it's not the pain hasn't gone. I just learned how to live with it. I came here with my mom to Los Angeles because I had my brothers living here. Since I was in Syria till now, I'm really different. I'm changed. I used to cry a lot and I used to be really sensitive. Before, I was scared of doing everything. I wouldn't do sports. I didn't do basketball. I was too scared. Oh, I don't know how to play that. I can't learn. And speed wise. I don't want someone. It doesn't matter if I'm a hijabi. I found out that I can do whatever. Yalla, Dalia. Do you have fun, mom? I get too much into it, Yani. <laughs> Most of your team, they're acting like they're um, scared from the ball. You have to go closer inside. She was 13 when we came here on the dangerous age. She looked around her and she tried to do things like other girls. She can go to her friend's birthday, but not in a, like, boys and girls' birthday. It's not common with us. It's not in our culture. Some strict rules on her, it'll be helpful in a nice way that we're not used to do this. Please don't do it. My dad didn't want me to 
be here at all in the United States. He thought, if I grew up here, I would be such a bad girl. Hi, Baba. My dad currently lives in Turkey. He works there and he is also married there. I've told my dad about ideas of feminism, like certain things. Hey. I'll send it to you. He is not like that at all. Yeah, I'm so excited. He for you. is a person that believes that men should have higher power or women should do this, women should do that. I try to not talk about the things that we disagree about because, I mean, because, because we're so far away. I love you so much. He is one of the most people that I'm afraid of. If I have like a conflict with them and something happens to him and he's away from me, I wouldn't forgive myself. I'm a little sad, but I'm excited. My parents' divorce was one of the hardest things for me. Especially that I had to come here to the United States and leave my dad. Also, one of the harder things for me was society and what society thought of me and my divorced parents, especially the Arab community. I never imagined myself like going far in education. I just imagined myself like just going to college and getting married like just like any other Arab girl. But now, hope. I want to study, I want to excel, I want to get my master's. Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump is facing heavy criticism after calling for a, quote, total and complete ban on Muslims entering the United States. Because we have a problem in this country. You look at Paris, you look at the carnage that took place in Paris, but look at Paris beyond that. Paris is no longer the beautiful, gorgeous city with all... Paris has a tremendous lot of problems. And they have areas in Paris that have been radicalized where the police refuse to go in and look at it. We are, we are He's well not aware. talking we sense. Are, you look at London, you look at other places. We are now, well aware. We are well aware, but Mr. Trump, here's... No, no, no. I actually love being the only Muslim at my school. I currently do not wear the hijab because I want to cover myself or protect myself from men, men's eyes. What made me love my hijab is my life experiences. It was a constant reminder for me of who I am, where I'm from. Come on, Dre! It was a constant reminder to me that you don't need to let your hair down or show your skin to be able to be beautiful. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Donald Trump nine, says stuff about every single nationality. If he's going to kick us out, he's going to kick all of us out. We were talking to my friends. I'm like, what if they kicks me out? Where am I going to go? I have no country to go back to. They're like, it's OK, Dahlia. We'll all go back to Mexico. We'll, we'll take you with us. <laughs> I to cram everything in these four years and I still want to do more because like how much can I get done in these four years in high school? Of course, I still have a lot more time. I'm still 17. Dahlia Zina. <laughs> I'm 
turning 18 today, so I can save America tomorrow. <laughs> so, I'm gonna save America today. Before I was born, my parents used to live here and had a citizenship. Also, my brothers were born here. This is my first time voting, so. Okay. So, this one is an example. So, you want to insert in the machine, you can push like this. the results on who was being president, I was terrified. This is actually my first protest. Like, it's nothing that I could do in Syria, I mean, mainly because I was young, but also, you know, if you put your life on the line, if you protest, you know, you were young over there, you couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I was too scared to do it. Right. In Syria, you can't say no. Yes, exactly. You know? Even on the phone, you can't no. say anything. No, no, no. And they're going to catch you. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> we were raised to be afraid. If I still lived in Syria, I would have been a completely different person. If I was born and raised here, I would have been a completely different person. 